everyone, it's Amy here. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well. So today we're going to be doing my March reading wrap up and I read 15 books in March. I'm impressed with myself because I really don't know how I did it. It was quite a busy month. So I'm going to jump straight into the books because we've got a lot to get through. So starting out as usual with my lower star rating and we'll work our way up to the five stars. I have the 10,000 doors of January. I gave this one two stars. This one is essentially a kind of through the door fantasy type novel where the main character January discovers that there are doors into other worlds. From the premise, this sounds like a book that would be right up my street. However, the pacing was completely off for me. There were two parts of the story. So you were with January for very, very long chapters and then you would change into a book that she was reading and then that would be a very very long chapter and so you kind of just felt like you were getting involved in January's story and then suddenly you were thrown into a completely different chapter that had like a very different feel to it and I just didn't enjoy that it was really jarring and it just made me not want to be like invested in the story and the characters talking about the characters I really felt nothing for them and also there was kind of a through line of kind of colonialism and uh, January was a biracial character and I just felt that the kind of racial issues and the t discussion on race was just really off and I didn't quite like get what the author was trying to do it just didn't sit quite right with me and I have since read reviews from people of colour who've read this book and they've kind of felt similar things and so yeah didn't enjoy this one all that much. My second two star read was Solutions and Other Problems by Ali Brosh. This is a graphic memoir type book. I actually spoke about this one quite a lot in one of my vlogs so I will link this around here if you want to go and see my full thoughts because I kind of talked quite a lot about it. To try and completely summarise my feelings on this one, it very much felt like to me that Ali Brosh when writing this book was having a mental health crisis and all of the stories felt very uncomfortable to read, they didn't come across as funny to me and I left this book feeling like Ali Brosh needed some help of some kind. I would say however though when I read reviews on Goodreads for this one so many people have rated this positively saying that it's like the funniest book that they've ever read and that they loved it so much so do take my review with a pinch of salt. I did mention this one on Instagram though loads of people said they felt the same as me so I don't know if you follow me and you have similar views to me potentially you would feel the same about this one but yeah I would maybe try and find some of these stories online I don't know I think she shares some of them see if you like them before maybe purchasing might be a good idea my next two star read goes to my friend Dharma by Durf Back Durf this again is a somewhat graphic memoir type thing before I talk about this one, this is a book that centres around a serial killer, so if that is something that upsets you, maybe skip forward to the next review because I will be talking about it. So yes, this book centres around Jeffrey Dahmer, who is a who was a serial killer. He murdered 17 young men in the 1980s. And this book is written by somebody who went to school with him and who is giving a perspective of a serial killer um, kind of before he then went and did all of those crimes. It seems so weird to say this, but in this book, I actually felt more sorry for the serial killer than, and more annoyed at the guy who wrote the book and the way he was behaving, which is madness. <laughs> the author does not paint himself in a very good light in this book at all. There's absolutely no self-awareness from this author in the way that he's portraying himself and the, the lack of kind of self-assessment on himself. So essentially, he lays out a story in which him and a group of his guy friends essentially bully this serial killer, Jeffrey Dahmer, throughout high school and they kind of treat him as, as a huge joke and although it seems somewhat like he plays into it, he, they clearly aren't creating a happy school environment for this guy and they can clearly see that he has issues like he drinks a lot, he comes to school drunk and the author kind of like lays it out to be like oh well it was the times you would never like report that someone was doing that back in those times and it's like but if you see someone struggling like I don't know it really didn't sit right with me at all and at the end he kind of reflects on things yet he doesn't reflect on his own behaviour doesn't even make a statement 
spoken about the fact that like the things that they did and said were really inappropriate there's like so many references to like people like people who may have disabilities um Jeffrey Dahmer would like mimic and like mock people who had disabilities and that was like a huge joke for them all the way through their school and yet there was no kind of like discussion about that at the end to say like yeah we were all really shit people yet you know not all of us became serial killers it was just it didn't sit with right with me at all i didn't enjoy it also didn't like the fact that the author despite behaving in all these ways and seeing all these things happening around jeffrey dahmer also then seemed to pin pretty much all of the blame on jeffrey dahmer's mum like goodness me like just huge eye roll in this situation so yeah i definitely wouldn't recommend this one but if you are interested maybe see if you can find some of it online to read before you go and pay for it because graphic novels are super expensive moving on to some three star reads so this one is mothers an essay on love and cruelty by jacqueline rose so this is a essay collection talking about mothers and the burdens in which the world sits at the feet of mothers and all of the things we kind of blame mothers for. Now I would say I wonder if I would give this a higher rating had I been a mother whilst reading this book. I'm not a mother, I haven't been a mother and so my perspective on it is from someone who has only witnessed mothers and the things that happen around mothers. The thing I really would have liked more of in this book was more discussion of real life situations, real life kind of facts and things that have happened in the world and it started off like that, like the, the beginning kind of opening chapter was a discussion on the NHS in the U UK and foreign mothers coming to the UK and using the NHS to have babies or lots of babies and that was the beginning chapter and I found that really interesting but the rest of the book kind of went off in like all these different directions and she was mainly talking about fictional mothers or people um, for instance Eleanor Ferrante who have created fictional mothers and there was just a big discussion on kind of Greek mythology and the mothers in that and I just wish it had kind of been brought back round to real life a little bit more. So yeah, didn't particularly love this one. I think it could have been like shortened down, like it was a short book, but she was trying to fit too much in. I think she could have explored some of the topics that she hit on in more detail rather than just like being all over the place. So sadly, didn't love this one either. <laughs> This is a good start to a video, isn't it? So <laughs> the next book we have here for the three star reads is Across the Wall by Garth Nix. This is a companion novel to the Old Kingdom series, which is a phenomenal fantasy series. If you want to go and read it, I would really recommend. So this is actually a book of short stories and I wasn't actually aware that only the first story in this book is in relation to the Old Kingdom series. All of the other stories in this book are completely random, have no connection to anything that he's written before. So with that, I didn't particularly enjoy the other stories in this book. Loved the first one, thought it was great, wish there had been more of just the Old Kingdom stuff because I know and love those characters. And I think as the years go on, I slowly discover that I'm just not really a short story kind of person. I need much longer of the characters if I'm gonna love them, if I'm gonna feel invested in their story. And I feel like I just forget short stories whatever happens just goes out of my brain as soon as i've read it pretty much so yeah three stars for this one it was okay but nothing to write home about oh no i've just realized i've forgotten to mention a two star read because i read it via ebook and that was milkman by anna burns i read this as a book club book for my work nobody enjoyed the book anna burns in milkman uses a very unique and bizarre form of writing, nothing like I've read before. Essentially the whole book is just one long sentence, one long kind of brain dump from the main character. It's just a complete stream of consciousness and I didn't enjoy it at all. Also, none of the characters have names. They're all referred to by kind of their relation to the main character, I guess. So there's the milkman, there's maybe boyfriend and second brother and all that kind of stuff so it was quite hard to feel attached to the characters and to remember exactly who they were when they didn't really have much identifying stuff connected to them. Essentially although it's not named it's a depiction of an Irish community during the time when there was kind of revolt and people resisting against the state and all of that kind of stuff and I again just wasn't a fan of the story, the characters, the way it was written 
written. It was a real slog and it took me a while to get through. And actually I was one of the only people that actually finished it for the book club. A lot of people just gave up. So maybe I'll do that next time if I'm not enjoying the book. So we'll jump back to the three stars. My final three stars was actually probably more of a three and a half stars. And that goes to Kingdom of Souls by Rena Barron. It's a fantasy book that bases its kind of mythology, I guess, on West African culture, the gods, the oracles, the magic system were all really beautiful, really wonderful. I loved the kind of world building aspect of it. I thought it was really, really interesting and not anything like I've read before. I think the thing that lacked the most for me was just the characters and the kind of connection that I had to them and the connection that they had with each other. I feel that there was so much push from the author to get the plot constantly moving along to the next big thing that actually we could have just spent more time with the characters, building their relationships, learning more about them, becoming more attached and I feel like that could have been done really easily. This book was like nearly 500 pages long and it's part of a series so it's you know you're gonna spend time with these characters but yeah sadly I didn't love that one as much as I hoped I would. So moving swiftly on to my four star reads for the month and the first one goes to Middlemarch by George Eliot. This was a real chunker of a read and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I part listened to it, part read it. Sometimes I was doing both at the same time, which I've discovered I really quite enjoy when I'm reading a classic book because sometimes the words, they're not familiar to you. And so having someone kind of hearing someone actually say the words and the inflections that they use on certain kind of words and things just makes it slightly easier to understand, I think. So this is based in a fictional town known as Middlemarch and we follow various different groups of people. It's very sweet, it's very quaint, very kind of Jane Austen-esque. And as I said in one of my videos, someone described these kind of books as just people visiting each other's houses. And yeah, that's pretty much what it is, but I like that. <laughs> I have absolutely no issue with that. I enjoy it. One main storyline that I really enjoyed in this book, which was a character named Dorothea and her husband, Mr. Kasorban, and the, their story, her development, she was my absolute favourite character all the way through, right up until the end. Her ending was just brilliant and I really loved it. So yeah, I would definitely recommend this one to you if you have an interest in reading a large classic, and I would certainly recommend the audiobook. My next four star read is The Furies by Katie Lowe. In my reading vlog, I pretty much sum this one up as if you like Pretty Little Liars, the TV show, and The Secret History, the book, then you'll probably like this book. Essentially, it's set in a all girls boarding school in the UK and our main character, she's a bit of an outcast, she joins the school and she kind of gets taken in by this group of cool kids that, are, you know, they're a little bit of the outcast as well, but they, they seem quite cool. So you can kind of see where the secret history vibes kind of come into here. She's also then kind of picked out by this, the cool art teacher to be part of like a secret class that they have. Again, <laughs> secret history vibes. You learn at the very beginning of the book that a girl has been found dead in very strange circumstances. All the way along, reading through the perspective of this main female character, you're just not sure. Like she's a bit of an unreliable one. You don't know if you're getting the full story from her. And again, you don't really know if you're getting the full story from all of the girls she's hanging around with. You feel like they're always like one step ahead of her and keeping things slightly secret. So you're always left a little bit guessing. It's a really well-written book. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It read almost like a bit of a thriller as well. It was a page turner and I really enjoyed it. So I would highly recommend this one. Next book I have to recommend is actually a book of poetry, which surprises me because I always say that I don't really get along with poetry. But again, this is a slam poetry type collection. And this is If My Body Could Speak by Blythe Bard. So she is a woman that I follow on Button Poetry, which is a slam poetry kind of YouTube channel. I'll link them around if you want to go and check them out. And she's someone that I found through there. And then since then have read a few of her poetry collections that she's put out. It's a fantastic collection. I would say look up the content warnings though because she does talk about eating disorders and rape in this collection and so it might not be for everybody. The final four star book goes to A Song Below Water by Bethany C. Morrow. So this is a YA contemporary fantasy which is not something I think I've ever read before but I thoroughly enjoyed it. The story is told through the perspective of two young women and each of the chapters kind of flips between the two of them. It's a coming of age, there's discussions on race, on being a young woman 
and the fantasy element of it is the one of the main characters she's a siren and the other main character has something about her as well but she's slowly discovering what that can be it's them in school dealing with boys dealing with people but also the kind of politicalness of being a black woman but also being a siren because in this fantasy world sirens are considered to be really bad and that they can control people and they don't like that and so if you are found to be a siren they put a collar on you to silence you to stop you from singing and from controlling people and it's just wonderful I really enjoyed it I don't know if this one's a series if it is then I am super excited to read the next one I would definitely recommend the next four books are all five star reads and the first one is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen so this was a reread for me for this book it was my reread of the month I thoroughly enjoyed it I'm not going to talk too much about it because I feel like everyone knows about Jane Austen about Pride and Prejudice but yeah if you haven't read any Jane Austen yet I would highly recommend it my next five star read is actually another slam poetry novel though this is a novel told through slam poetry it's very clever and I also listened to this one on audiobook and it's The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo this one brilliant and I would highly recommend listening to it because hearing her say the words in is actually her that narrates it is brilliant it basically follows the story of a young woman named Zeomara who discovers slam poetry at school and uses it as a way of kind of releasing everything that she's feeling she has difficult relationships with her mother and the rest of her family uh, she's having a difficult relationship with religion and knowing what to do in terms of what she believes and all of that kind of stuff and the poems are just fantastic it just it just transported me to another place to another person and I really felt her story it was really really rich and I really really enjoyed it so I would definitely recommend my next five star read goes to My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell essentially this book shook me to my core this follows the story of a young 15 year old girl named Vanessa who is groomed by her English teacher who is in his early 40s I believe the author mentions that she was heavily influenced by Lolita by Vladimir Nobokov and that is actually mentioned all throughout the book because it's actually a book that the teacher gives to Vanessa to read and she kind of takes that on and that's kind of the beginnings of the grooming. The story flicks between the year 2000 which is when Vanessa was in school and when the relationship with this teacher began and then 2017 when she's in present day and she's heard through the news that another girl has announced that she has been groomed by the same teacher. One of the contention points of this story is the fact that Vanessa believes that she was consensual in the relationship and that it was love and that she shouldn't have to report it, that she shouldn't have to stand with these other women who are also fighting out against this man because she loved him, she has a relationship with him and she saw no issue with it. And as you flick back and forward and you see more of this relationship building, you can see how it's like, it's literally giving me shivers, like thinking about it because this is a dark read. Like it was hard to get through, but very important, I believe, to read things like this because shit like this happens all the time and men get away with this shit all the time because they manipulate people that they see to be vulnerable and they convince them it's just so fucking sad like it literally it grinds my gears and Vanessa's story is just imagined so incredibly well it's so raw and heartbreaking and being a woman reading this story absolutely messed me up I don't believe I'm a person that's particularly affected by triggering subjects however this book really really got to me and so I would warn any of you and I would encourage any of you to go and read the content warnings because there's a lot that happens in this book not just the grooming there's there's a hell of a lot of stuff and so yeah fantastic read one of the bo best books I think I've ever read however it was very difficult and my final five star read for the month was the assassin's blade by sarah j maas so i made a whole reading vlog on this book if you want to go and see it i will link it around here i'm basically reading all of the throne of glass books and doing a kind of spoilery vlogging situation with them all it's a prequel to the throne of glass books and so we get to see the main character selena where she came from the life she had before the beginning of the throne of glass series 
and it was just wonderful. I'm not going to go too much into it because I don't want to spoil all the stories. It was certainly a book that brought me a lot of joy and happiness in March. So there we are, those are all the books that I read in March. I would love to hear down below, have you read any of these? What did you think of them? What have you read in March? I'd love to hear down below. As always I will leave links to everything I've mentioned today down below. I hope you're all having a fantastic day and I will see you soon. Bye!